And then they had a weird way of writing the last step, too. Instead of doing H3O plus some heat, they wrote it like this. What's BA? Barium oxide? I guess this is a base. I guess the point is that now they're doing a basic hydrolysis. I suppose this is just be a basic hydrolysis, in which case I would think that we would form a carboxylate down here. Um, although I, they, they don't seem to be too careful about that in the book. But uh, in another part of the book, they did the, um, the acidic hydrolysis. So you should, you know, as, as we know, we can use either basic or acidic hydrolyses. Uh, if you're doing your own synthesis, I think it's simplest just to use H3O+, but you should see that there's different ways that this is written. So the way we had it on the board before is fine, but this is also something that would be considered acceptable. Okay. Is it necessarily like more correct to do the BAO, or just if you want the O-minus at the end? Yeah, that, um, no, it's not more correct, and, even, and they're not, they don't seem to be being very careful about that, because they're still writing, even in this case, they're still writing a protonated amine group. So they don't seem to be, in the answer key, they're not being very careful about the charges on the amino acid, as far as I can tell. So I simply wanted to mention this, because you might see this uh, as a correct answer, but the acidic hydrolysis would seem to work fine as well. All right, um, and let's do a stricter synthesis of methionine. Now let's do the stricter synthesis for methionine. Oh, excuse me. And here we're supposed to start So we have to look the theming up in our table. So this is the structure for methionine. Now, the number one alpha carbon, remember, this is going to become our alpha carbon. The carbonyl is going to become the alpha carbon. And therefore, who's going to be the beta carbon? Well, we're hoping that this is going to be the beta carbon over here. But then we have a problem that the rest of the side chain doesn't match it. And um, before we start adding on the amino group and the cyanide, I think it would make sense to fix this side chain. So we need to make this into a correct side chain. Well, basically, what do we need to attach to the number four? SCH3. We need, yeah, we need to attach an SCH3. Well, how can we do that? What type of reaction could we use to attach that SCH3? Michael addition. That's right. Technically, Michael addition is only when you have an enolate uh, nucleophile, but it's like a Michael addition, and we call it a conjugate addition, where we're attacking the beta carbon. Notice, though, that the nucleophile would look like this. The nucleophile would look like this. And as we already discussed, 
The beta carbon here is electrophilic because there is a resonance structure where it has a full positive charge. Sulfur is a pretty good nucleophile even in a neutral form, so it can attack. We don't need any catalyst or anything for this. Yeah, that's the easiest thing. That would leave a positive charge on this sulfur and a negative charge on the alpha carbon over here. Uh, if you're going to do the full mechanism, you might show uh, this deprotonating and this, then this protonating. But overall, this is really just stealing the proton from the sulfur. So, so do you need like a H plus after it, or can you just proton like, transfer? Yeah. Yeah, so we don't need any special acid or anything here. So we, we don't need aqueous workup for a microaddition. Um, we, cannot, we can just take the proton from the sulfur that already attacked, basically. That's still uh, a slight oversimplification. If you remember when we talked about conjugate addition, what really happens is um, what really happens is we start with um, a negative charge on the oxygen. Then that protonates to form an enol, but then that tautomerizes to form the carbonyl. But at, at this point, I don't think you're going to need to go through that full mechanism. So all we need to be able to do is predict the products here. So it's a good shortcut to imagine. But the negative charge just goes under the number three, and then we can transfer the proton from the sulfur to the carbon. Anyway, notice that it looks like at a bunch of points in the book they're using these types of conjugate or Michael additions for amino acid synthesis. So this is a good time to remind yourself that that's one of the possible synthetic strategies that you can use. All right, and then I think from this point on, you guys wouldn't have uh, too much trouble. So uh, next, yeah, we could add the ammonium cyanide. Okay, so the only tricky part here was forming uh, the side chain to uh, begin with. Now, just to, to warn you about some of the other possible reagents, this time when they did this, they didn't write the ammonium cyanide like this. Instead, they wrote it like this. But you can see we're still delivering cyanide ions and ammonium ions. So they're just showing different ways of delivering cyanide ions and ammonium ions. I don't think you would have to ever have this memorized enough to use it yourself in a synthesis, but if you're doing, say, a predict the products, you should be able to recognize that this is really just a way of delivering cyanide and ammonium. So there's a bunch of legal ways to write that you're delivering cyanide and ammonium. Um, and you can just memorize one for yourself if you're going to do a synthesis. And then in the last step, they showed the basic hydrolysis they just showed it like this. They just said they added sodium hydroxide for the basic hydrolysis. I'm going to say, to say that's the water. Anyway, um, there's a bunch of different ways they write these reagents for this purpose. Pardon? They didn't actually mention any heat here, but uh, I, I do think that you do need heat to hydrolyze cyanide, so um, to hydrolyze nitrile, so I'll add that in. Okay. Okay, well, I think that's pretty good coverage for the uh, Strecker synthesis. Again, the key point is your starting material here is an aldehyde. Not a ketone, right? Because the alpha carbon always should have one hidden hydrogen, right? There's always a hidden hydrogen on the alpha carbon. So if you're making a naturally occurring amino acid, you start with an aldehyde. And again, this is not going to form the carboxy carbon. This is going to form the alpha carbon. This carbon over here is going to form the beta carbon. And we're going to add ourselves the nitrogen and the carboxy carbon using cyanide. To me, in a way, this is a little bit simpler than the Gabriel synthesis. That's all I have to say about the structure synthesis. Should we move on to another topic? Yes. All right, well, uh, let's see what else is in your list. Thank you.